blonde tree today from Stitches TV. Do you know what we're going to make today? Today I'm doing my Bridget Bardot impression, I wish. A friend of mine who owns this company called Unique Gifts from Emily wanted to go into production of making these 60s style fluffy hats. So I helped her make the first sample. Now inside she's used these vintage travel scarves from all over the world and you know what we're going to make them today these hats are much simpler than you think all you need is an old vintage scarf but you can use anything obviously and you need about 30 centimeters of some fur now i've used fake fur but you can of course use real fur the first thing that you need to do is you've got to measure your head my head's probably quite big and then you have to divide it up into four because the hat is made up it might look like one piece but because of the clever way in which we cut it you can't see any of the seams and I'm going to show you how to do that the reason we divide it up into four look can you see these four sections each one of these sections is exactly the same so it's so easy so we take the measurement of our head divide it by four and if you'd like to look at the pattern that I've done here so that width there is the measurement of around our head divided by four and I've added a little bit of extra seam allowance the next measurement that you need is from the crown of your head to however far down you want it to be. If you want to have a look at the pattern, on the pattern that's from the crown here going down, so that's my 21. Now this extra bit here applies to the facing inside the hat. For the lining we use exactly the same pattern. Now this line coming across here is where the lining is going to finish so when I do the lining all I'll do is just simply fold this back and fold all these bits in and then that will be my lining pattern by the way to make life easy for you I'm going to put this pattern on my website stitchless.co.uk this is a really important part about the hat now usually when you cut fur you have to be really attentive to the pile of the fabric and it will always go down but you know what in this situation it goes the complete opposite way and that is so important to get this fluffy ball effect so the way in which we're going to lay the pattern on will be not with the pile going down but with the pile going upside down that way you lay your pattern on the wrong side of the fabric, double check that your fur is going towards the top of the petal, i.e. the fur is going the wrong way. Now the only way to cut this fur is to draw around it. You can't just, you can't pile up double layers and then just cut it out and I'm going to explain to you why. So even if you're cutting out a fur jacket, whatever you're cutting out, you have to use this method if you want to hide all your seams. So I'm just drawing around with a biro, very important to use a biro. So I'm drawing around my pattern all the way. Now another thing that's very, very important is to mark all your notches with the pen. You're probably not going to snip in and you'll find out why soon. Okay, draw all the way around the pattern. Then when you've done that, take it off. And then I'm going to show you how to cut fur. Okay, now this is how you cut fur. You're going to feel really tempted to do shortcuts, but it's just not worth it. Just stick with it and do it really slowly, okay? Now what you do is, so you've got your line drawn out, and I'm just taking the most incredibly small, little teeny weeny snips. It's like doing pigeon steps, going to the shops, but don't be tempted to run. Now the reason why we're doing teeny weeny little snips like this is because 
Look, look at the fur. We don't want to lose this. Look, see that how it all goes over the side. So when we do the seam, the seam will be covered up by all that fur. So you've got to keep going all the way round, doing teeny weeny laborious, not very stitchless, speedy snips. Do you know what? Don't wear black. Look at me, I'm just covered in fur. This is what we have, four petal shaped pieces of fur. Now look, if we didn't use those pigeon step cutting techniques, we wouldn't have all these lovely long fluffy bits. So the next thing that we need to do is we have to cut out the lining. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So here's our scarf, I'm folding it over so I can cut two at once. But do you know what, I, I actually, I want to be a bit careful about the placement because I want to get all the best bits. This vintage scarf is from Ireland. My dad was from Ireland. And look, it's got Killarney and it's got Promenade Bray, County Wexford. Wow, my dad was from Dun Dungarvan. Dungarvan, I think so, near Waterford. So you get your pattern, see that line there? That's the fold line because we just want this petal bit at the top. So we need to eliminate all that stuff behind. So we just fold it and fold it. So you just end up with the lining pattern. Now it's up to you where you want to place it on your scarf. I want to take all the best bits, but then I'm a little bit concerned about wasting all that scarf, but hey, never mind. So you've got to cut around your pattern. It's going to be very kind of slippery, but as you know, I don't use pins, but it's up to you if you want to. So that gives us two pieces. Look how gorgeous they are. They look like something out of a storybook. So we just need two more, because we need four pieces for the lining. What we have are four slightly ski whiffy, never mind, pieces of lining, and four pieces of hat. So we're ready to sew. First of all, put your sewing machine to zigzag stitch. Now my gorgeous pink mini JL, it's F. Starting with the hat, we get two of the pieces and we are going to push. This will seem quite tricky, okay, but it really, really isn't. You just push all the hair away. You're pushing it away so that you're just getting to the actual backing. And then when you've got it, you put the two points together and you've really got to line up all your notches. We do not need pins. We really do not need pins. And if anything, they get in the way because it is really vital that you do very small seam allowances. Otherwise, we're gonna see the seam. So what we do is we do a zigzag stitch, overcasting on the edge first, which is gonna act like a stay stitch and hold it in place and then we can go in catching the tops of the v's of the zigzag with a straight stitch so zigzag stitch here we go so I'm, i've got my needle in i'm starting off a little bit by hand and then i'm going to go backwards and forwards now this remember you're just doing it right on the edge we hardly want any seam allowance we're pushing in our fur, tucking it in. It isn't really very difficult. Come and have a look. And then the next important thing, can you see my little notches that I made of the pen? Yep. They, thank you, Esther, <laughs> they have to line up. And we go zigzag, stop at the notch, take a little break, needle in, push in some more fur. Where are my next notches? Ooh, there they are line them up, no pulling, just squashing it under the foot, feeding it along. Okay, so now I'm at the next notch, I'm going to tuck bits in. You get the idea, don't you? Yep. And you just keep going all the way down that seam. You should have something like this. So we've zigzagged, like an overcast stitch, all the edges which acts like a stasis. Now, you could probably leave it like that, you know, but if you want to be extra sure that it's not going to come undone, you then 
go in with a straight stitch just capturing all the tops of those V's. So I'm going to do that now. On my mini JL that's a D. I'm going along and I'm just capturing the tops of the V's of my zigzag because I want hardly any seam allowance. The moment of truth to see the invisible seam. Do you want to see? Look at that. So by the time you fluffed up all your fur, can you see why we did the pile going up rather than down? Because when you fluff it all up, you can't even see a seam. This is a hat of two halves. So I've done that half. So now I do exactly the same with my other two remaining pieces. We now have two halves of the hat. And now we're gonna put the two halves together. So what we do is this one right way round, this one wrong way round. Then we do the same thing that we did when we were doing the seams, except we're gonna start at the crown of the hat, the middle top of the hat. So my seams are right sides together. I'm starting at the top. Now just a little bit of advance warning. That bit there's gonna be a bit chunky because you've got extra fabric. So I would turn the wheel as you sew. Don't forget to put it on zigzag now. So that's F on the mini JL. Match up those middle seams. Squeeze them underneath your foot. And the first bit, look, this little wheel on the side here, you only ever turn it towards you. You can sew with it. So if you have a power cut or something like that, don't worry, you've got no excuse. You can still make clothes because you just turn that wheel and it will go. But seriously, the reason why we're doing the turning the wheel thing is that I can feel if, if it's too thick and there's a bit of resistance, I can feel that the needle's getting stuck and then I can take it out again and go back in. But if I put my foot on the pedal, I would just break a needle and we don't wanna do that. So I've cleared the thick bit now and I'm ready to go. Pushing in all the fur, same as before, matching up my notches and squashing it under the foot. So we've done three, basically we've done three of them now. And I've gone in and I've done a straight stitch as well. So I've done the straight stitch. So now I'm going to do the last seam. So we've made a gorgeous chef's hat, look at that. No, not really. So when we turn it the right way round, the magic starts to reveal itself. Look at that. Yay. So all the fluffy stuff, you've got to make it all go down. Actually, you could probably do the hairbrush, couldn't you? But we're not at that stage yet because now we need to think about the lining. The lining. <sighs> what we do is we get the lining. We do the same sort of thing where we do it in two sections. We put it right sides together and we simply do a straight stitch about two mil away from the edge. So I'm going to do that now. I've got my mini JL on D. I'm putting it right sides together and so. So the lining's in two halves and now we're going to do the same as we did on the hat where we put them right sides together and push our seams either one way or the other. I'm going to start in the middle, go down, start in the middle, go down. So still on straight stitch. So when you finish your lining, it should look like this, which is quite a gorgeous little skull cap. Now I'm going to quickly press it. It's up to you. If you don't want to press it, that's fine, but this is your last chance. I'll quickly do it now. Take a deep breath because the next bit's just a tiny, weeny, weeny, weeny little bit tricky, but you'll be fine. What you have to do is, you've got to line up your super slippery fabric with your super fluffy fur. Now I'm working in this situation to about a centimetre seam allowance because I need it to grab it because the lining could really fray. I'm lining up the seam of the lining with the seam of the fur of the hat and I'm doing one section at a time right sides together. 
using a straight stitch and I'm going to have the lining on the top and it's very important that each section does actually fit so even if it seems like the lining's a bit bigger or the fur's a bit bigger you just cheat it and squash it in there so we're going to do that now so it's about a centimeter seam allowance it's not a fantastic job sorry but you've just got to make sure that all of your seams of your linings match up with the seam of the fur so I'm holding the seam of the fur and the lining together and there's a bit of excess in the fur but I'm just squashing it in and it will be fine now we can safely reach another section so I'm lining up the seam of the lining with the seam of the fur there's a little bit of excess again so I am still going to squash that in as well so off we go so I keep going until I get to the seam on the other side that's a horrible job just take your time all right there's no hurry we've got one more section to do so if you're ready it's all it's getting more and more difficult because it's more and more squashed but we're all right so we're going to do one more section so we've done two sections we're on our third section so the same thing if you can line up your seams okay and make sure everything's flat and just sew as I get close to the last seam it's getting really tight around here of the hat but we're fine we're going to be okay so I'm just going to keep going squashing the hat in that little hole and then I'm going to go backwards and forwards to close the seam so it doesn't come undone and I'll show you whoops, what we've got so can you see so we've got this that's our last section that we didn't sew there that's the last section and that's the one that we're going to use to turn the hat can you see how I turn the hat like that now this last bit here you can still do a little bit more on the machine by turning it did you see what I did so I got the hat I turned it around and I'm going to come from this side now and I'm just going to do as much as I can on the machine so I'm going to do a little bit more there and then you can just finish the rest by hand we've got a smaller hole now so this much is left to be hand sewn right Whew. so I'm going to have a look so I'm pushing down the facing do you remember I said that we cut it a little bit longer because we have a facing? It's a good idea to brush your hat. So you brush the pile going down like that. And then after, oh gosh, after a while, it does stay like that, like this. But when you first do it, it's all kind of really staticky. So, shall I try it on? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Bridget Bardot, eat your heart out.